Hello, sports fans! Shout this here. Time for another episode of Shoutstone. Not doing a shout cast right now. Doing something for the newbies. The new players. The folks who just got this game or are just looking to figure out what the heck they're doing or how they're doing it. Yeah, anyway. So here's what I want to do. I'm going to go into free play mode for just a second. The beauty about free play mode is that it's just you. Just you and the ball. Look at that. Alright, so here's what I want to cover first. Some of the basics. Now I'm not really talking about the stuff like controls. You can figure out the controls. They're not that difficult. You got forward, backwards, turn one way, turn the other way. That's all pretty straightforward, right? Well, some of the stuff that you really want to get used to because it is going to be a big factor in how you play the game is quick access to your camera control. As you can see, there's one camera that focuses solely on the ball regardless of where the car is pointing. And then there's another camera that just focuses on what's in front of you. So that's important. Second thing. Be mindful of your break turn. You see how I did that? Just kind of turning hard into the turn, getting a quick kind of spin around move. You're going to need to be able to be good with that. And not necessarily for something as dramatic as a full 180, but even as you say, you're coming in the corner and the ball rebounds out. Quick turn, get reoriented. It's a lot faster than just trying to turn like this. You know, it seems fast, but every second counts in Rocket League. Every little second that you have matters. The sooner you can get in front of that ball or behind it, the better. So, with that in mind, now let's talk about the jump. Don't just spam your jump button. That'll just send you going crazy. There are two levels to the jump. There's one, and then there's two. Now that is how you pull off some of the really sophisticated or more advanced shots. Where you're going into the ball, and you can redirect yourself as well. You see what I did there? Like, let's say, I'm going to give you a little hypothetical example here. Let's come in from the side on, on this goal here. We'll just do it from, just from right here, just for an example. Let's say the ball is heading in, or, or kind of floating in front of the goal. It's not moving toward it, so you got to redirect it. Well, something as simple as, all right, that went a little out of control, but just something as simple as coming in and then turning and hitting like that can show you how, you see how I did that there? just redirecting yourself. You can do a side shot, like let's try a side shot on the ball right now. All right, that was more of a front shot because my timing was off. But that's, honestly, that's something you're gonna have to work on in time, is just getting used to the timing of the ball as it's moving around and how to best position yourself. So I recommend, you know, come into this mode and practice that double jump. Get a handle for how your car reacts and moves when you do certain things. You know, there's no meter to it. You just can't do it again until you hit the ground. So pretty straightforward, right? All right. The next thing is your boost. Now, I want to show you something in regards to the boost. Do you see that point right there where the car suddenly goes, you know, into another gear and it just goes so much faster? That is the point where you can do a lot of different things, but it also affects your car in different ways. So for example, when you see a demolition happen, like when you're zooming in and you strike another opponent going that fast and they blow up, that's what triggers that. You have to be going that fast to do it. But when you're going that fast, like let's, uh, let's turn around, get the full field in front of us. When you're going that fast, you lose a lot of the control that you have from going even just that level you know it gets a lot harder to turn a lot harder to get where you need to go so you need to be able to manage that second level of boost wisely it's fine to come zooming down the field but you see it's real it's just a matter of how fast you're going it's it's not a factor of how long the boost is being held for because you can see i just did it right there to kind of demonstrate 
that even just tapping it three times makes the will get you to that speed and trigger that boost. So it's really a matter of, you know, just manage your speed, use the boost wisely, because it is limited. Now with boost on our mind, let's talk a little bit about these little uh, targets that you see kind of scattered all around the field. Those are your boost refills, because boost is critically important. When the ball suddenly rebounds going all the way down the end of the field, you're going to want to be able to get down to your goal as quickly as possible and then go careening into it, because that's what men do. Uh, I have no idea. Anyway, there's two levels of boost refills. There's that little guy, which gets you about 12, 10 or 12, a little bit. And there's this guy. That's going to refill your meter back to full. That is important. Because sometimes what you may want to do is, let's say, you got your eye on the ball. This is typically the camera you're probably going to use the most because you gotta know where that ball is. It's more important a lot of the time to know where the ball is instead of where you are. You can get you can get your bearings pretty well as you get used to how the fields look and how everything kind of around you looks. But the important thing is sometimes, like let's say you spawn way back here, for example, and instead of charging in on the ball, you're probably gonna be back on defense. So let's turn the ball cam off and now you're going to want to zoom right over here grab that boost and now you're back now you got a full boost to use to apply pressure now you got to be careful with that too because generally if you spawn way back here and and you're the furthest back person on the field your job is going to be to play defense for the kickoff not not defense constantly there's no real steady position unless you have that team dynamic like if you've got a team that you're working with to, you know, build positional play with, then that's fine. But generally in these pickup matches and online exhibitions and things like that, you just need to be able to play smart. And realize, don't rely on the people you don't know to play smart for you. That's the best example I can, best thing I can tell you. So if you spawn far, furthest back, you're basically, the unwritten rule is that you are now on defense, but not permanently. So what I like to say is if you spawn back here, wait for the kickoff. Watch where the ball goes. If the ball's moving on forward, you can move forward too. Don't, do not, um, unless you see a crystal clear opening, don't go boosting full throttle. You know, oh, I gotta move up there really quick. Don't do that. You know, gate, play it out. Because you are still on defense while that ball is active. So start moving in. You know, ease in. When you get to about mid, the midway field, or the midfield, Gauge where the ball is. Can you make a move on it? Go ahead and do it. Should you fall back? Did the ball suddenly turn around? Okay, fall back. Don't back up, because backing up is ridiculous. You can't boost in reverse. But back up, get into position, you're good. Don't feel like you have to play defense the entire game. You know, rely on other players to hopefully do their job. But what I really recommend is be mindful of the defensive position on the field at all times. All right, now, a lot of the stuff I'm telling you now, this is not advanced level stuff, but this is gonna help build that foundation that you can learn and build into being, being a more advanced player from. So here's something else I wanna tell you. I want, I, I've mentioned this in my shoutcast before, but I wanna talk about how the ball reacts to your car. Just a little bit. Obviously, it's all physics-based, but because every car has a different shape, you get the idea that maybe every car reacts to the ball differently, and that's not the case. Every car treats the ball, and the ball reacts to every car exactly the same. That's the beauty of this game. Every choice you make is aesthetic. Whatever you put on your car, whatever your car looks like, it is all aesthetic only. The only factor that separates people who win and people who lose is luck and skill that's it it doesn't come down to what you've unlocked how long you've played anything like that as you get better you can unlock more and just be a better player because you're playing more that's all there is to it so anyway let me go ahead i want to clear this ball out a little bit so, all right, first thing I want to show you is hitting the ball straight on 
is going to shoot it in the air. Now I want you to think of your car as like a wedge, like a doorstop. Now when you hit it full throttle, dead center, it's going to go in the air. You see what it did there? I didn't hit it dead center because the ball's moving, I'm moving, that's a lot harder to do than it seems. Um, now if I go and jump at it, it's going to stay on the ground. Think of it as, if you have any billiards experience, think of it as applying English to the ball. You know, if you take a cue ball and you hit it, or you take a cue stick and you hit it low on the ball, it's going to send it in the air a little bit. You're going to get some lift on it. But if you come in center, it's not going to get any air. It's just going to, you know, go forward or go in whatever direction you happen to hit it from. So... Those are really important things to know is how the ball reacts basically when it's on the ground. Because most of the time as you're learning this game, your shots are going to come from the ground. You're not going to be making any mid-air aerial bicycle kick type shots yet. <laughs> you know, that takes some time and practice and the biggest thing is learning where to be at, to get to the ball. Because here, let me, let me show you this. Let's shoot the ball just straight up into the corner. Okay, now how do we get where we need to be for this ball? Like, how do you know where to be? You know, it's really difficult. Even at my level, it gets very difficult. You know, I, I'm not even doing that through ball cams. That makes it even harder. But, like here, am I going to be able to stop this? Can I get in front of it? Okay, I did, but just barely. So, you know, that's something that you got to be mindful of. How does your car... Or how does the ball react to your car? And how are you going to get in position to keep the ball in the air? And another thing too, which I just actually demonstrated there, is being able to figure out how to react to the ball as it bounces. Timing that is a big skill that will take you a long way. So, with all of that stuff in mind, I hope you gained a little bit of knowledge on some of the more fundamentals of Rocket League. I don't want to call them basics because I don't think they're basics. The basics is how do you move forward? How do you jump? How do you boost? It's less about how do you do things and more of how do you utilize them to be an effective player. If you, if you start focusing on those things, you're going to have a much better time, you're going to be a much better player, and you're going to be a much better asset to your team. Because this is a team game most of the time. There are three match types that are team based. So next time I do this, I'm going to want to talk about a little bit of, I want to say, I guess, play, team playing, really. Just how you should play on a team. And I talked a little bit about it today, but next time we'll go into a little more detail. So that's going to do it for this episode of Shoutstone. I'll be back with another Shoutcast very soon. Uh, like this video, subscribe. I'd love to be able to share my, my shout casting ability with more people, not just you. I like you. I really do. But I could use your help. So that's it. I will see you all next time. Have a fantastic time. And that'll be it. Bye.